Josie, I got a I got a question. You might not like it. And, you, and, and I only I, I'm just, I'm just going to preface it like that. You might not like it. I'm, I want to hear the answer because you talked about playing. You talked about being happy, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take take it back maybe a year or two to to Toronto when Chris Armis wow. got uh, got hired. You know, um, and just like you're my former teammate national team, Armis is my former teammate national team. So you know, and and obviously yeah. Chris, uh, I mean, B's played with him as well. What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Crack Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for episode three, season three. I want to give a big, 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 big round of applause to my co-host, Mr. Gucci Onyewu, Demarcus Beasley, and myself, I'm Abricio Muki Wilson. We are so glad to be here today, and we have, I don't want to call him a guest, uh, I think today we're gonna make him a fourth member of the of the no. uh, of the of the group. No, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We we have a U.S. men's national team. Uh, I guess you call him veteran now. He's only in thirty two years of age, but uh, Mr. Josie Altador. Um, oh yeah, you're a veteran at thirty. If you ain't a veteran at thirty two, what are you? <laughs> Goodness gracious! I look at you guys still like you on the team, so I, I know he's a he's definitely a generation below you guys. But two um, generations below us. Two generations. Let's be clear. Let's be clear. But Josie is joining us very early on the show. Um, Bees, how you feeling today, brother? I'm good, man. I'm ready to. Uh, I'm ready to get at Josie. So let, let's 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 get at let's get at it. Oh man, you, you gonna mention how he's been dodging us though? Like legit, that, man. I got the text ready to go. <laughs> he got receipts he got receipts my man got receipts man that is crazy but um a, a lot's been going on um in soccer as a whole it's been fun i just want to say today is two 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 to be clear the day we were recording and uh it's timothy Weyer birthday so big shout outs to timothy Weyer. Happy um, birthday, King. Kristen Polistic scored a goal today in the champions league so big shout out to him and to Today's my. I heard, he, I heard he did that. I heard he did that because of you, because you were talking so much smack about him in pre, prior months. So he said, you know, I got to do this for Mookie because he's sleeping on me like, is, is, like is, always. Is, is Goose still hanging on to that? Is he still okay. hanging on? Jeez, I never see a man. Oh, I've never seen a man hanging on a tree so long. But uh, oh, this guy. It's also uh, my anniversary, uh, two year anniversary. So uh, big up um, my wife and, um, and and my family and friends and loved ones, man. But. With no further ado, man, let's bring on the Zoe, Mr. Josie Altador. What up, Joes? What up? What up? Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear yeah, you clear. What's up, brother? Yeah, hey, I was trying to say that was on me. Hold on, let me get my head. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I, yo, he comes man. on. He doesn't have his headphones on. Dude. I was letting him charge five minutes, bro. They was dead. Yeah. I'm going like, hey, to I, I, I ain't going to bullshit, though. How long it take me to get my mic ready, Mook? Oh, uh, like what? Season and a half? Two years. Yeah, oh, today. Oh, today. No, 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 oh, today, no, today, no, today. no, 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 no. No, I, I'm not gonna put down shit. you. I think it might have been my fault, man. I told you it was your shit. But Joe, let me give you the proper introduction, man. Let's get a big round of applause, please, for the United States men's national team veteran, MLS Cup uh, final MVP, MLS Cup winner, uh, two World Cups. Um, you know. Uh, my, a, a model, uh, uh, a model, like, yep, yep. businessman, <laughs> entrepreneur, father, husband, uh, over a hundred caps, over a hundred caps. I mean, over forty goals, <laughs> and it's, and that's why it took us three seasons to get him on the show, man. Let's get a big round of applause, please, Mr. Josie Altador, sir. What I'm man. Appreciate it, man. Following in the footsteps of these dudes right here, man. I'm trying to tell you, brother. I'm trying to tell you. These two brothers right here, they laid the path, man. So what's up to y'all? Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, how's preseason going? Good, man. Today was actually um, the final day of a preseason match we had, like, nice. like 45 minutes ago. So, 
y'all bees you and gooch you know how it is so i'm very happy to end <laughs> preseason and, and get started now you know preseason is never fun so what year is this how, how, much, how much how much running is bruce making you do man let me tell you bruce hasn't changed in the sense you, you y'all know him and it's like you know he, he peels off a little bit but when you work you work you know what i'm saying so mm. it's been hard on the legs but it's preseason you need that you need to build that foundation for the year so it's been good and uh yeah, year seventeen, Moop. Wow. Year seventeen starts with season. Up. God so. bless, man. God bless. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do what bees did. Twenty. I'm trying I'm to say you go. You, you go make it easily, 20, man. I, easily. You go make it no, easily. 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 Make I don't know 20, about though. easily, but I'm trying to make it. Bro. Hey, you got that. You got that Zoe blood in you, man. You can do it, brother. You can do it, man. <laughs> Yo, you're, you're gonna be 35 when you when when your 20th year. So you be. Well, good first to go, of all, man. let's all just be real. Uh, Josie's older than both of us right now. And we oh, didn't, don't call him a Freddy. Don't another. call him a Freddy. Don't call him a Freddy. Don't call him a Freddy. Yo, people, man. Yo, Freddy's our peoples, but he that's definitely not his age, Josie. Come on, man. Don't do that, dog. <laughs> oh, first, first, national t- first national team camp with, with Josie, they said, yo, this, this boy's 18. I said, what boy? <laughs> 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 Say one boy. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. oh my goodness. Jo- Josie, how's, how's, yeah, I have no doubt, man. But here's a problem, though, man. He don't want to come on the on the, on the show. He don't like bees, so you know. Stop. We try to tell Mrs. Love here. You know what I mean? He said he don't like Stop. you, bees. He, he said he don't like you. <laughs> Not play. You forward to voicemail. Forward to this call's been forward to voicemail. I was like, oh snap! <laughs> Y'all know Freddie got a lot to deal with. Leave Freddie alone, man. Freddy yeah, man. Boy. But we, we want to show him that love, though. You want we want to put him on that pedestal. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna but, try to hit him to, to get it. Make sure he do this podcast. Podcast is amazing. Man. I appreciate. It'd be cool you. for him to tell a story. You know, he got a cool story, different story than everybody. So, and, and that's the thing we want to do here. We want to tell it the way it needs to be told, and not through the the lens of other people. And, and as well, we all got to learn from each other. You know what I mean? Like you said, um, there's many things that Gooch and and uh, Bees have done that paved the way. And look at you now, how much things you have paved the way for the the generation behind you, man. You know, absolutely, man. Uh, how do you feel in terms of your 17th season coming into preseason? having these young gunners in the locker room, man. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a balance. Like if Bees was trying to trying to hang on and trying to be cool like them, man. Like, you know, <laughs> how, how do you know how to fit in? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's different for sure, man. Like, they playing music and I'm like, who is this? Who is like, that? You know who this is, man? This is so-and-so. He popping. They doing all these dances and stuff. So it's crazy because I'm sure Bees and Gooch, y'all know, like, just yesterday, that was us, you know, doing these yeah. dances, getting the celebrations ready. And then, yeah. you know, boom, I'm looking at them like, what are you doing? You know, yeah. so <laughs> it, it's 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 different. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I'm lucky that I'm still even in the locker room. Some of these kids, 16, 17 years old, you know, so I'm just happy to still be here, to be honest with you. It, it's it's true how they say your career flashes, right? Like yesterday, oh, sure you man. Know, you're 18 today. You're talking about I don't know what that song is, you know. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and and honestly, if you don't take advantage of it and like cherish it, cherish it in the moment, like it's gone before you know it. So I'm glad you made that that that, that remark right there. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now listen, man, a lot has changed with you, brother. I mean, you know. Last year was an interesting year. Even since the pandemic, it's been interesting, right? Your family's been growing. Um, you know, you had some injuries. You had some difficulties with, with the team and, and changing teams. Um, I'm, I'm sure, like, even the offseason, being a free agent or trying to find a new club was interesting for you. But uh, before we talk about all that, man, like, what do you think is the – how you've grown as, as a person off the field, man, since then? Yeah, man, a lot. You know, these – I've learned a lot. Um, oh, yeah, but, but before you finish this, we need to preface everything with this ain't no boo boo podcast. Like, be real. Like, just <laughs> yeah, knows that, don't, 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 Josie, jo- Josie nah. gets politically correct as soon as he gets on camera sometimes. Nah, he, he, know know that. That. he know that. He know that. He know that. As soon as, but as soon as but camera's you on, know. he's like, you Gooch, you and bees know, and but you and bees know how it how how this game goes. You y'all know how it goes. You know you can only be real to a certain point, and then you know how it goes. You know, so I got to be careful too. You know, because it's not All about right. me no more. I got the wifey. You know what I mean? I got I got my son now. So you know, I'm a, I'm gonna try to be real always as much as I can. But I also Definitely. understand, Mook. To your point, what have I 
what's changed is this, you know, understanding that like people always talk about realness, this, that, but they don't really want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? And, and and when you start giving it out, you know, they try to silence you in a lot of ways. And yeah. I've learned, I've learned that, you know, it's bigger than me. You know, it's not just about me that things that I say affect my family, you know, and, and I got to be careful with those things. And, and not only that, that it's a business. Like I've always known that, but going through some of the things I went through, I understand that it's a business first and foremost for everybody involved. Maybe I see things, you know, I care about a community or whatever, but it's a business at the end of the day that the owners, the leaders of these clubs, these organizations, you know, they care about their bottom line. So I've, I've just learned that that's, I got to keep that in the back of my mind with everything I say with how I move, but at the same time, try to find a balance of, you know, being true to myself. So true. So true. And I think we all, you know, have, uh, have battles with that. Right. And it's just like, where do we say enough's enough? Where do we say that, you know, um, it's time to be heard, but same time, like you said, you got to pay your bills, you got to pay your rent and protect your family. You know? You know, I mean, I think, I think, I, I think, I think we all, I think we all went through that shit though. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, um, cause now obviously with the, the tragedy, what happened to George, uh, um, George Floyd, you know, now we're stronger together instead of one person doing it by themselves. Exactly. And, you know, they, they, they felt alone when they wanted to speak out about something that they were really true about. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I feel what Joji's saying because, you know, when I was when, when we were playing, you got to think about, you know, your family. You know, you got to think about, you know, obviously your next your next paycheck and make sure your family's straight. You can take care of them for for a long time. So, you know, sometimes you, you got to watch what you say. You know, you got to you got to you got to play the game. Um, but now. In saying that, you know, we have, you know, these young, you know, these young brothers coming up and they sticking together and really honing in on their word and what they want to do and trying to uh, affect change. But you said the and right word, that, bees, is sticking together. And I think yeah, sticking that, together. I think you know that's what, what, we, that's that's what, what I said. It's not, yeah. it's not just one person speaking out and say, okay, this is how it should be. This is how I think. You know, now we got a group of young br- uh, black, black men and, you know, they're leading the charge and they're young. You know what I'm saying? They're not, you know, 40, 45, 50 year old. They're, you know, 20, 25, some 30. And it, it's beautiful to see. So I 100 percent. You know what I think? You know what I think is a little different? Um, obviously, especially with the national team, like they have numbers, whereas before when we were playing, we definitely did not. You know, <laughs> we did not. We were we were definitely the minorities in regards to the, the numbers of the group. For whatever reason, uh, but like now, I look at the lineup. I'm like, this could be a, this could be an all brother lineup if they really wanted to, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's never been like that before. Um, so, you know, I, I'm glad that you come to that realization. How, let's say, my question is, how long does it take you to come to that? Like, because at some point you're in your career, me and B's have been there. Like, you just don't think about it. You're having a good time. You're vibing, and then at you know, as, as your career goes on, it's more the business, it's more the industry, and it kind of wears on you. Like, when when did you, because, you you know, you're a veteran now, but you're still our little brother. So when did you hit that point that you were like, you know what, maybe they don't have my back like I thought they did, mm. you know? Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, definitely this last, this last little bit, man, yes, this sir. last little bit, you know, I'm, this last 18 months, you know, I'm sitting there talking about things, you know, looking after my little brothers on the team. And listen, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not perfect. You know, there are definitely instances where I could have been better, um, whatever it could be. You know, I look at myself always first and say, what could I have done better in that situation? But there's also situations where, you know, I've been in this game just as long as, as anybody else. And when you have people that you thought, you know, had your back beyond just the playing career or beyond just teammates and you grow to know that's not really the case mm. that's a tough pill to swallow because then you understand it's poli- it's not it, it, it's it's a, it's a business even for them people are only looking out for themselves for their own longevity right everybody's looking out for their own longevity you know you can play with guys for years and then you hit them up you know for something and they act like they don't know you and that's when i really understood that <laughs> like a beast, you know, like there, a beast there are, <laughs> no but, but but there are no friends like that like it's all good and well when you're playing together but when you hit that next phase i'm realizing it's every man for himself that's man. a hard like, pill to really swallow especially when you're not up oh yeah you know what i mean it, it's hard exactly. because the people that you're you're making the sacrifice for the people that forget you afterwards so that's that's why mm-hmm. it's so hard you're like man i did all this for you and then at the end of the day like you didn't even care about what I did. You know, you're just using me at a point. So no, I definitely feel that. And, man. and then and then to that, to that Gooch, like you think about some of the moments you share with, with guys, you know, World Cups, 
big moments, man. You know, like you 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 change the trajectory, not yourself, but that group mm -hmm. in different moments in all of our moments, whether it was you guys in 2002, bees, or in 2010. And you think there's a bond with these guys, some of these guys for life. You think like, look at what we did. But as soon as you hang up the boots, man, it's like, I'm looking out for me. And I get that. But, you know, when you're in the locker room at that time and how guys perceive relationships, I'm sure this all happened to you guys. You think it's a brotherhood, you know, and you realize it's not really like that. And not everybody's built that way in the sense where it transcends just the game. Like us three, we're going to be boys forever. It transcends just the game, you know, but it's not like that for everybody. And that, and that MOOC is a tough pill to swallow because a lot of people make it out to be that way, but it's not really that way. But, but speaking for a person on the outside who's been in the, like, I'm saying the real world, but not in the athlete bubble for the last many years, you know, decade, is that, you know, you learn a little bit quicker than what you guys have experienced on who's really with you and who's really not. While you guys kind of live in a bubble where it's kind of a facade, just because you wear the same jersey, you thinking that person's riding with you. And yeah. now, only now you learning when you really need them, you know. But a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, person who scored as many goals as you has many successes as yourself that um, a lot of teams weren't there or picking up the phone when you were making a phone call this off season, you know. Um, and the same thing happened to DeMarcus Beasley. Same thing happened to Gucci and Yewu. Even after they, they finished playing, trying to get jobs, the same thing happens, right? But I think that goes back to being, having, being togetherness in terms of forming that bond and making sure that we can move as a unit to help each other, right? So now, if BZ does get a job, that he makes sure that he he has that type of um, commitment to grab you and say, listen, before you retire, these are things you need to do and the steps you need to take. And the same way for you now, as an elder, as a veteran, you need to make sure, can you talk to Weston McKinney? Can you grab these younger players and give them a heads up on how they can prepare themselves before they reach 32 and, and, and uh, and, and have a rude awakening of, of, of what um, you, are, you are going through now. Do you have that relationship with them? Well, teams was calling me, Mook. I just didn't want to go okay. to some of them. Okay, okay, <laughs> so okay. My bad. With you. Some of these markets, no, nah, some of these markets at this point, just to your point, like at this point in my life, in my career, you know, and I was talking to Gooch about this too, like they're just challenges where, you know, five, six years ago, maybe, you know, but now it's, it's different. You know, I'm a husband, I got my son, so I have to make a decision for my family too. And, you know, I, I, to the second point, I always try to keep in touch with those guys, you know, here and there, you know, supporting them, sending them messages of support, whether it's Timmy, uh, Weston, Tyler, all these guys, because, you know, and Bees and Gucci, no, we went through what they're going through in the sense of, you know, go to Europe young and, you know, everything's all good. But there's a moment where it's not going to be all good. You know, we, and I, I try to let, make sure when I'm with them, when I speak to them, to understand that. And that's part of it. Don't let your lows get too low. And. You know, to see to see what they're doing though, man, I'm just so proud because I know how difficult it is, you know, to be in Europe. You guys know by yourself, it's hard. It feels like you're against the world and, and to stay focused and to keep trying to climb, you know, climb the ladder. So I'm just proud of those guys. And I definitely try to every now and again, you know, whisper little nothings in their ear about staying humble, staying grounded um, and, and just keep doing what they're doing. It, it's, it's really positive to see. What was your diff so most difficult moment oh. in Europe? Most difficult moment in Europe, um, yeah, Sunderland. Sunderland for for a lot of reasons. You know, there's a lot of things. You know, a lot of things out there. People talk about. You know, he wasn't good enough for the level. This, that. But personally, you know, I, I I went, I went to to Sunderland at a time where I had a lot going on in my personal life. You know, my son was born through that time. It was a very sticky situation. You know, I was dealing with the police off and on, you know, while I was in Sunderland. So soccer was secondary. Mm. And it, and it, and it sucked. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I was going to let that go by. It, it, I was going to let that go by. <laughs> I ain't trying to share too much, but. The police. It, it, it was a toxic situation, man. And, and soccer was secondary. Like, it wasn't, you know, and then can you imagine, like, at that age, we're in the Premier League. Like, it should be the primary thing. Yeah. You know, but I wasn't equipped to dealing with it. And I had a lot of things going on where it was secondary. Now I can look back and it hurts to say it, but it was. And so, um, you know, it was an opportunity lost, but at the end of the day, um, you know, I learned from it and that's all I could ask from it, is that I learned from it and I grew from it. And, you know, I think I'm a better yeah. man today because of it. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think you left Europe too early to come back to the MLS? Because I um, personally think you left Europe too early to come back to the MLS. That's my opinion. I was like, you know, you went over there, 
you had Spain, you tore it up in Holland, you know, you got your transfers here. And like you said, maybe Sunderland wasn't the right puzzle piece for you, right? But I was like, ah, Josie's made for Europe. Like this man, he's yeah. he's just got too many qualities. He could he could he could be the next Lukaku at the right team, right? In the right league. And then uh, obviously big news when you signed over at MLS. I was like, yeah, 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 I get it. But that money, me, was, that money looked yeah, good though. I'm about to, I'm about to say no, actually, man, actually, I, actually, you know, you know, that's another misconception. Like yeah. I wanna it, that's funny you bring that up, Gooch, because Gooch, in a way I agree with you. Um, to the first part of that, like I think I learned to like to do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I was still young and I had my family around me, very heavy, my agents, and everybody was pushing me to go to MLS. Look, I don't regret mm-hmm. it. it. It turned out great, but it wasn't deep down something that I was dying about. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I wanted to please everybody. I didn't want people to be disappointed. And to the second point, the money thing, like I, I've till this day, I see people talking about, oh, he would have never got that money. I want to clear it up. The money I got, <laughs> I, the money I got in MLS, That's I probably cool. got like a three, four hundred thousand dollar of more than what I was earning in the Premier League. Exactly. I didn't come to MLS for six times what I was. Drop that. Uh, Drop that. Tell them, tell them what you were making, Josie. No, tell them what you were making. All the time, I see that all the time, and I'm like, I don't get where that come from. Like, I I came to MLS, I probably made sign with Toronto like three or four hundred grand more on a base salary that I was earning at Sunderland. So I didn't Problem come to Toronto ML- for like MLS six is- times more or a lot of these guys came for, you know, they made six times what they were getting in Europe to come back. That didn't happen. So, you know, and my contract stayed steadily through Toronto. I had to hit all my bonuses. And so that notion they, that they, I came I back. I think the issue is because M- MLS, MLS publishes salaries and people think, oh, because this was huge. That was huge in MLS, sure. right? So they, yeah. they don't know. That was huge in MLS. You, you, yeah, you, you, you were at, you were at a, a point in Europe, like your value was high. So like exactly, there, there was no reason yeah, so, why you weren't getting a, a hefty. Yeah, that's really well. annoying. I have to say that, and I was at Sunderland, which was like the seventh or sixth or seventh best highest paying team in the Premier League at that time. I mean, I'm not trying to like toot no horns, but like I see that going around. I've never had a chance to really talk about it. So it's funny you say that. Like I wasn't one of those guys. There are guys that came back to MLS and made six times what they were getting in Europe. So they came are, back are those, for money. Oh, did those guys play with you at Toronto? <laughs> Stop, man, don't do that. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm just saying that. I hate when people say that. They, they always say like, oh, he came back for the money. Bro, that was, I didn't come back for this huge raise. I came back for the project. The project to me was intriguing. Tim Laiwiki was intriguing. Playing with Sebastian Giovinco and trying Ooh, to build baller. something that was different. You know, it was just different than what other MLS clubs had going on. So that was that was one of the most annoying things. People, were like, oh, he came back for the money, like that was not the case. Yes, like, I think, I think, I think if they were offering me six know? times of what I was getting in the prem, yeah, it would have been for the money, but it wasn't that. You know? Yeah, I think I think even when even when I talk about well, not talk about, but you know, even when I talk about the Premier League and. I said, you know, about the bonuses, you know, you get for, for uh, yeah. you know, for appearance bonuses and obviously your salary and then all win bonuses and, you know, Champions cut bonuses, League. all this stuff. You don't even spend your salary. You know what I'm saying? Don't, so don't a lot, a lot, uh, but my point, but my point, the, the point, the reason why I'm saying it is because they have this notion. Uh, I think that if you're not a, you know, a Man City or a, well, probably not at the time, but, you know, say, a, you know, Manchester United, Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, Premier League. They, nah, no nah, Arsenal, no, no. They be hating on me, Joe. They be hating on me. No, but they, they think they think they, they think that you know teams like 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 a Sunderland, like a Everton, a Leeds, that that them that them fools don't make no money. What, bro? <laughs> Kurt Zuma was making two hundred fifty no. divided by no. two, every one hundred and twenty every week. And I, and I and I say this because I, I'm experienced, and I was obviously I played in Europe for a bit, but I was even when I first went to um, City after I left PSV, and I you know the, like. The, the, some of the the clubs like Fulham, you know what I'm saying? Like these these cats that I had never heard of, never heard. There's only like sixty grand a week, and I'm saying, huh? I'm like, that's like that's the the amount of money y'all make in the Premier League, and yeah. no, you couldn't you couldn't name uh, all the Fulham players at yeah, that time. Yeah, you couldn't name yeah. all Watford's players at that yeah, time. I'm not yeah, saying, yeah. look, don't get me wrong. I am not talking about a small club. I'm not saying they are not small because they are a lot of all the clubs are great clubs with a lot of great history. A lot of history. I'm just. I'm just saying the levels of the clubs, you know what I'm saying? It ain't it's, it's 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 big, but Premier League, they make a lot of money. So to Josie's point, yeah, he was already on a hefty salary at Sunderland. You know what I'm saying? People just didn't realize it because 
it said Sunderland. It wasn't a main not main United, and they just thought, oh well, he probably wasn't making that much money, and so he came back to Toronto for you know whatever it was. You know what I'm saying? That's that was my no, point that, that, That's the only way they they lure people up north to Newcastle and Sunderland. They gotta pay that <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that, man. Don't say that. Nah, Sunderland. Nah, you got bees. Dude, you play. Sunderland's amazing, bro. Sunderland, Newcastle, the Northeast, the football. No, that's what I'm fans. telling you. But look, the fans they are crazy. crazy. Specifically, yeah. people yeah. people prefer to stay in the South, London, you know, even Manchester. Yeah. No, but no, like no, the true. higher true. North true. you get, they have to. Yeah, you, you need an incentive. Like, all right, why am I true. leaving true. London? Oh, because yeah. two times the South. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll come to Sunderland. <laughs> why not? You hey, know hey I mean? Joe, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about Canada, man. Your experience in Toronto, but also. Um, you know, the Canadian national team is, is doing quite well and they're calling it uh, a golden generation. Yeah. Nah, it's it's uh it's no surprise to be honest with you. I um you know, when I first got there, I'll never forget, you know, watching the academy practices because they come to the same training facility as us and they practice in the afternoon after they're done with school and stuff. So some days I'm there late, um, and I would watch them and you know, to no surprise you know, there, there's, you know, Jaquil Marshall Rudy. I remember watching him when he was like 12 years old. Dangerous. And, you know, look at him now. Like, it's no surprise. There's a lot of young kids in the academy there that, you know, have now made themselves known on the first team. And there's even more behind them. You know, yes. Canada, man, they, they have a lot of talent. It was just about, I feel like, the organization just being organized, right? Mm -hmm. H hiring the right coaches, you know, getting these kids seen by the right people. And I think now it's just coming together a bit. They've got a great coaching staff, and, and Herdman, he's done a terrific job in identifying guys, getting guys to commit to Canada. And I think you see the Canadian boys, you know, a lot of these kids, you know, they grew up in, in some rough places. And yes. you see that on the field, how they play, you know, the pride they show, you know. That's probably the team I've seen with the most scuffles in any conky cap. Like, they were right up in there together, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's kind of, it shows about their upbringing, what they're about. You know, they're very, they have a chip on their shoulder but they stick together and, and they're extremely talented. So it's no surprise to me to see how far they've done. Maybe it's kind of surprising how quickly they've done it in terms of the last two, three years, but the talent has always been there, I think. And it was about, you know, getting it together, getting guys to really commit to the program. And then the program stepping things up. I think the program has done a good job, right? And making these guys want to come to camp, the Alfonso Davies and the Jonathan Davies, these guys that they've got to commit. So it's, it's been really cool to see, man. And uh, living in Canada seven years, I, I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't a little happy for them and, and the progress yeah. they've made hey. and playing with some of those guys. Hey, Goose, when, when, when Josie was up in uh, Toronto, man, his accent started to sound like Drake and all that. I mean, he was, he, <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be surprised he got a, pa a, a Canadian passport. You know, he, he was, he was, he was saying, hey, and all, you know, that Canadian talk and listen to that music. But Josie, do you think, it's a, do you think they, they have... Um, got a bigger soccer culture than us, uh, football culture, closer to European culture than we have here. We're doing. Mook, Mook, you tired of hearing you, yes, hey. You. <laughs> Stop. No, but bees, come on. Like, you guys remember the qualifiers back in the day? We used to have some great crowds. I think the program just naturally hit a little bit of a dip, right? Not qualifying didn't help. And you look at the guys now and, and the atmospheres that, that are coming back to the national team. I think the national team has done well in qualifiers, man. I just think it's been a little bit of a rough patch, but these young guns have kind of revitalized the program in a lot of ways. So I wouldn't say their culture is better in terms of soccer. I just think our country is, is, is big in other sports, man. Let's be honest. I think, you know, we have a lot going on here, um, but Canada's no slouch, man. I think yeah. they've shown up well for their team. They've created an amazing environment. And to some ways, I can understand if you say their culture looks a bit more sophisticated right now. But I, I, I wouldn't say that the U.S. is behind in that. I, I just think you know, we're, you're being a little bit of prisoner of the moment right now, you know, because Canada's obviously doing very, very well with a number of good players. But I think they're both equally uh, great soccer cultures. Hey, listen, man, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. U.S. Uh, US men's national team needs you, Josie. Stop, man. Are you I'll done? Do I'm not even, Mook, I'm not even, you know, so many people asked me this the past few weeks. I'm not even thinking about it, man. Like, and Gucci and Bees know this. When you play a number of years there, it's, it's great. It's not like the hunger's not there, but I'm just focused on me, man. Trying to get myself right. You know, just trying to feel good, be happy, be in a good place. And then whatever happens, happens. But that's the last thing on my mind. I'm being 100% real with you. Like, I get so happy watching these guys, man. Like, first of all, watching my boys commentating, watching Gucci in the suit. Look at all Frank up in there on CBS. Like, 
I don't know. It just, I guess I have so much pride in it. Like those are my boys. Those are my guys. And then, you know, watching Weston, you know, whether it's Ricardo Pepe, uh, Giassi, um, Serginio, watching these guys, man, like they're doing what we were doing, you know? And, and to me, that's really exciting. And I take a they lot of pride they, in they, that. They, they, they ain't spinning uh, Spanish defenders and scoring in Confed Cup, so, you know? What I'm yeah, but look, man, <laughs> everything's relative, man. It's all relative, you know? I, I think they're on their own path. The program's in a different way. It's on a different path, but I'm excited for what they're doing. It, it, I, they, I say they need you curve. because I think there's a gap between cats like Ricardo Pepe, right, who's a talented player, but he needs somebody above him who has that experience that he that he's not had that pressure, but also he can learn from in the game. And Greg has said in the past that you're the best number nine we have in this country. Everybody really knows that, right? And if it was due to injuries or whatever, you know, obviously it was due to injuries and things you were going through last season. If you come out scoring eight goals, are you in touch with Greg Berhalter? Has he, has he reached out to you since you... Sign with New England Revolution. <laughs> this guy moved, man. <laughs> hey, that's, we call, we call that a Mookie, a Mookie question. That's a Mookie question. Mookie question. Mookie question. Look, Mookie man, question. look. Um, look, when you're part of the program, as long as we all have been, you're always in touch with different people in the program, man. That's, that's natural. Um, but like I told you, man, I, I, I swear to you, I promise you, like, everybody has dreams. Of course, playing in the World Cup, playing for the Nats team is the highest honor you can have. But I'd be lying to you if I told you that the only thing – I'm thinking about for me is is just myself trying to get myself in a good way, trying to enjoy the game. It's been a rough 18 months with COVID, not playing at home. And so I just want to play games and, and just enjoy the game again. And, I, you know, the national team is, is, is in great hands right now. These young boys are doing their thing. And there's a learning curve, man. The international level is different. It's different beast. You're playing against, you know, different states. So it takes a while to get it. But I have faith in, in our boys and what they're doing, and I think they just need some time. They need some time and, and, and confidence, and, you know, confidence is magic, baby. So, you know, I'm hopeful things will turn around like they already have, and, and guys will keep progressing. Josie, I got a, I got a question. You might not like it. And, you, and, and I only, I, I'm just, I'm just going to preface it like that. You might not like it. I'm, I want to hear the answer because you talked about playing. You talked about being happy, right? Yeah. So I'm going to take, take it back maybe a year or two to, to Toronto when Chris Armis wow. got, uh, got hired, you know? Um, and just like you're my former teammate national team, Armis is my former teammate national team. So, you know, and, and obviously yeah. Chris, uh, I mean, B's played with him as well. What the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first, first, like, I got no beef with Chris Armas. Let me tell you, man, Chris is a great guy. He He's a good dude. You know, he came in, he tried to, you know, put his stamp on the team. And I think at, at his core, he's a good guy. And um, nothing really crazy happened. I think I said some things to him that, you know. He's a, um, he's a stubborn Long Islander, man. He's not good with Chris. Yeah, he's, you know? he's a Long Islander. There's nothing wrong with that. And, Different. you know, we had a discussion about some things and we didn't see eye to eye. But there's nothing bad with him. I think he's a good guy. I think he means well. You know, he's trying to find his way as a coach. And mm. like I told you, man, I had a great, to be honest with you, I had a great experience with Chris. Uh, believe it or not, man, he's a good even, dude. Even, good even when you got sent away? Look, Chris will tell you, I got sent away for telling him something real. He'll yeah. tell you that. I'm not mm. lying. I'm not doing nothing. And it was something that we talked about and he knows. Like, So, it may, so he may not have liked my delivery, but he knows what I was saying was right. And it was, I was just looking out for my boys and the team. So, at so, that point. so, so what's the what's the learning point from that? What can we learn from that situation? What have you learned from that situation? I learned that, you know, I learned that at the end of the day, man, like you can have all these discussions, but you know, I, I, I said something to him maybe that I should have said in a different way, but what I said was right. And, you know, I, I'm I'm a guy that I look I always look out for the team first, man. And mm -hmm. I said something to him that I thought was important for the team something that he knew as well. And so it's a tough one because when you're losing every game, yeah. you know, and you play for a club that's passionate, that where you have fans care, mm -hmm. you got to speak up. And, you know, last time I was a part of a team that didn't speak up, it went terrible. And I, I think as an older player, you got to sometimes, you know, throw caution to the wind and say things that need to be said because nobody else is going to do it. And so, you know, I, I don't, I have no regrets. And I tell you right now, Chris will be the first to tell you, what I was telling him was real. He is not a bad dude. Um, we haven't spoken or nothing, but I wish him well. And you know, he's a nice guy. He has he has a wonderful family. 
And I'm happy to see him at Manchester United because he works his ass off. And so, he really does. Um, you know, I, I wish him the best. Bees and Gooch, have you been in that situation as elders, especially going back to the MLS and having young coaches who, you know, don't have the history as uh, as other coaches you had in the past? Do you ever have a situation where you felt you need to step up as a veteran in the locker room to say something to the coach? For me, I don't. I don't think it was the the coach. It's more so the the management. You know, the upper. You know, the upper. Um, you know, the the ownership group, the general managers, and all that. Um, yeah, I stepped up uh, plenty of times when I was in Houston. About That's why Houston don't give you free tickets. What uh, <laughs> <laughs> yo, Josie, I'm in Houston. Like, yo, bees, I want to go to a game. Can I get some tickets? He's like, ah, 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 No, but no, but real talk though. Like, you know, um, you know, we still like me, myself, and a couple other guys. We stood together and, and we showed. Well, we tried to tell the club. You know, some of the things that they were doing wasn't correct. You know what I'm saying? To try to make steps. And not saying that you have to go out and spend some type of money. We don't have to have the same type of club that Toronto has. And, like, we went to their facility. We see how they get treated and what they have. And, you know, all these other clubs that you go there, you know, you go to their, their club to train before you play them. And you see, you know, the setup. You know what I'm saying? So you, you see things. Um, it was not like that. So, but at the same time, yes, you know, as an older, you know, uh, player and, a, you know, obviously the captain of the team, yeah, I, I I had many a conversations of what I thought should happen um, for the players, and I could, it's one hundred percent exactly what Jody said. Team first, you know, it's all about the players. It wasn't about me personally, you know. what I'm saying it was, and it was, it, it was never me going to the the management and saying, okay, we got to do this, 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 this. It was a group, you know. We spoke together before, and I was just, I was just the guy, or me and a couple of the guys, was the guys that go to talk to the to the club and say, okay, look these are some things that need to change. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, Josie, I, I messed up, man. I should have directed that that question to the bark, to, 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 to the bull. <laughs> oh, Aguchi Oyebu. <laughs> I know him so damn nice. He wanna, he probably wrote a letter first and email and oh, ask for appointment. <laughs> Gooch, Gooch, you had a young coach in, 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 uh, oh, in Curtin at, at Philadelphia goodness. Union. Did you ever get frustrated at a young coach or <laughs> felt you had to say something in the behalf of the team? Because y'all were getting your ass bust in Philadelphia Union when you were there too for a little while. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, we weren't. But um, <laughs> no, nah, in, in Philly, there was our vibe in the locker room was good. Mm -hmm. Like our if if I'm how do I put it? This Philly was the first time that I've ever played on a team with friends, right? And I had a lot of friends on the team. That I I have nothing to say about the locker room in Philly. That was like the high point, like of the year was getting into the locker room and just vibing with the guys. So on that side, no. But through my career. I mean, y'all know me. Like, I'll, I'll speak my piece. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll do it. I'll do it in a very, pol you know, politically correct manner, so you can know that you that you're wrong. There was there was a time, I think, the, <laughs> a couple times, uh, but one that sticks out in my mind is um, when I was at Sporting. Uh, we were playing a game, and a, and a striker. His name was Bojanov. Um, he was a striker, and he wasn't playing a lot, and he got on the field. And we had a penalty. And before the game, the coach never designated who could take the penalty, right? And this is this a number nine. This is this is a striker. This is who you want to score goals. He wanted to take the penalty. You see the coach on the sideline saying, no, no, and get, get, telling another player to take it instead of him. And then what ended up happening is the two of them started fighting over the ball. Have you ever seen a game where, like, teammates are fighting oh, over yes, who to take? Yes. That's, that's how it was. Ended up, Bojanov took the ball, took the penalty, and guess what? He missed it. And so it was a big ruckus. They actually banned him from the training center. It was like it's a big ordeal. And I actually told the coach afterward in front of the group, I was like, okay, we get it, but if you're paying this number nine to score goals and you want the person to take the penalty – to have confidence. The second you, you're like telling him no, like you already shot him. Like you, we knew he wasn't going to make it, right? You took his yeah. confidence all, all the way from him in that moment. They didn't like that I said that. Um, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. So I, I think it's to your point, like what, what you said to Armis, it is all about delivery. And nobody likes to be heard that they're wrong or told that they're wrong. Um, but sometimes the truth has to be uncomfortable, but it has to be said at times. So 
I don't know what you said to Chris, but if, if you're happy that, you, that it came out, hey, then Josie, I'm happy that it came out. Both these stories were whack. Wait, I know your story wait, is wait, way me, better, man. Tell me your wait, story, wait, man. Tell me. What, I, I know your story is way more dramatic, funnier, realer. Come on, man. I got to hear those two stories. That was a little lightweight about a penalty kick. I know you, you got a better story said, than that, Josie. Josie, come on, give us a story. Oh, yeah. Yo, you said in that my elder days. You didn't say my younger days. I, I don't even want to go back because it's too old. Younger days is way too. Like, why not? It's not even on film. Oh, that's too God. long ago. That's too long. Which, ago. Why, why, why isn't it? That, 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 that was my that, 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 that was my that was my that's my one frustrating moment when I was younger. No, I used to walk out of training. I used to kick the ball in the air. I used to tell the coach. I used to tell the coach. I used to tell the coach to fuck off. Oh, oh, that shit. Oh, y'all, y'all want to hear that story? Nah, I'm, it's over. It's yeah. over. Let's move on. That's okay, true. go ahead. All right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that, but you don't even know what coach I'm talking about, so it don't even matter. Yeah, yeah. What was Josie like as a young, up and coming, um, you know, young rookie national team player? Um, oh, Josie, th- Josie thought he was 35 years old when he was 18. Oh, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Josie, Josie, saying, Josie, Josie, Josie was a man child. He thought he could bully anybody. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I learned the difference between strength and grown man strength. Grown man strength. I went to the national team. Went up against this guy. I was like, man, he made some what? I'm strong too. Yeah, put me on my ass. Like, hey, this, ain't, this ain't the same. The twenties, like big oh. years, different. It's oh different. man, different. I definitely learned that. That was that was crazy because you know you grow up. Everybody's telling you a man child, yeah. all that stuff, and then yeah. you go against a guy like Gucci Camp, and you try to push up on him. He's looking at you like little boy. You know what I mean? I'm just like, dang. I, I learned that lesson. You, you thought that African too. strength, that Nigerian. <laughs> <laughs> you thought that Haitian strength, <laughs> Haitian strength, but it's so yeah. far. And then Jimmy came into you, man. Oh my goodness gracious, Josie, you with Bruce Arena now? Yeah. You had a good team. I personally think you're one of the best strikers when you're healthy and in, in form that the U.S. has ever produced, and that that's 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 going with Clint as well. That's going with Landon as well. I think you have a set of skills and, and qualities that other strikers just don't have together. So you've never had a nearest national team. When 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 you're healthy and when you're informed. Now you're going to New England you're at New England. That's been performing really well, especially last season, with a good strike force, a good offense. How do you feel going into that in terms of, you know, coming are you are you disrupting their their vibe? Are you trying to fit in and see where you fit in? Are you trying to like wreck house and be like, this is my house now? Well, like, what, what's the deal? No, I mean, Bruce was very clear with, with the team, um, with where they're at, with what they've built so far. So I know my role coming into to this. You know, there's no surprises for me. They have, you know, two very good strikers. And so for me, the idea, they're playing a lot more games this year. And in the future, we hope to be playing a lot more games, obviously, next year, too, with the Champions League and now U.S. Open Cup and other things. So my job is to come in. Obviously, you're complete. You're competing for places, right? At the highest level, that's how it always is. But for me, I'm gonna. I, I, I believe I'll be a guy that is trying to add to what they have going on. You know, when when I come in games, to try to break deadlocks, to try to get my own minutes in certain ways. But but to score goals, man. Let's be honest. To score goals and add another threat to an already dangerous team. So that's really my focus. That's what he said he wants my focus to be, and I'm excited for it. It's a different challenge for me. But one that, you know, I can't wait to, to grab because I think I can help add goals to the team when they need it and just try to be somebody that comes in and tries to change games in a positive way. And then when I do start, you know, do what I do and, and, and try to score goals, hold the ball up, bring guys into the game and add to an already very, very good team. You know, New England may not be one of the bigger markets, but coming here, training here with these guys, I see right away. It's, it's very rare. And you guys know that MLS, we have a team from one to 28 and it's quality. You know, it, it's not like this. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty close everywhere. So I think training's good every day. Um, the quality is high. And so it's been a breath of fresh air, man, to be in a new environment, a new locker room. And then Bruce, you know, you know how the, how Bruce is with guys. You know, he, he makes it a place that you want to be in. He makes the energy infectious. So, so far, it's, it's been a great, been a great adjustment for me. Yeah, and, I, and I'll piggyback off of that. I had a, you know, similar a similar conversation with Bruce when he, uh, you know, brought me back out of retirement to play for the national team. Um, I mean, that's literally almost 
exactly what he said to me. You know, um, he said, Bees, I, I want you to come in. Um, your role is is not going to be a starter every every time you come into camp. But uh, he's like, if you're fit and you're, you're you know you're playing well, uh, I'm going to bring you in. And I know I know that if you know, I think the time it was Jorge. Uh, Jorge was playing uh, most of the time. Um, you know, if he's if he's fit and playing, he's going to play. But you know, if something happens, injury or you know, card uh, cautions or whatever. Who's Jorge? Uh, Villa Fania, Campos. Campos. He said Campos. Yeah. Oh, y'all, y'all ain't right, man. Y'all ain't right. But no, but I'm saying, but I'm saying, like I had a similar, like he sat me down when we talked on the phone, even at that first January camp. You know, he put it to me straight, just like what he did with Josie. So I, under, I 100%, uh, I could feel what Josie was saying because I, I hear Bruce in my ear t- telling me the same yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? Because he told me he's like, look, this is what it is. I, you can still play. You know, I still think you bring value to to the national team even at your age, but. You know, we're still looking at younger players to get them, you know, minutes and play. But when I need you, I know I can count on you. And, and that's what I did. I was, you know, towards my end of my year. Joe G was with me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I would play some games. I didn't play other ones. But, you know what I'm saying? I was there, focused. I was, you know, I trained hard every day. All that shit. Y'all know I, I train. I do that shit anyway. Yeah. But, you know, but, yeah, just that I had that same conversation with Bruce. Same conversation. Fellas, I need an answer from each one of you. Who's the best U.S. national team coach between Klinsman? Bob Bradley and Bruce Arena, and why? And why? And I'm gonna start with Gucci on you. Uh, I will say for me, <clears throat> well, they're all great, but I am impartial towards Bruce because he gave me my opportunity, right? Uh, and it was in a in a moment that he didn't have to. Like I was in between. He brought me in when he had the likes of Burhalter, Boca Negra, Tony Sana, Eddie Pope, uh, Danny Califf. Like all these players that had already been like cemented central defenders for the national team. He was like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to trust you. And he trusted me to take all of those guys positions. So I'm impartial toward Bruce because he was able to help me set the platform within my national team career. Man, so you gave me a bullshit answer. Josie, what is what was that? Wait, 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 who, who's the best quality? Who is the best for the U.S. national team? Who you feel is the best coach? And be honest. It's that's a tough one, man. Like I think honestly, I'm not even trying to bullshit you. Like they all had things that made them like. If I took, I feel like you took a little bit from all of them. You have you have the ultimate coach. I know that sounds stupid, but like you gonna accept really that good. answer and not accept no them? because <laughs> no, but <laughs> finish, but, let me finish first. I ain't get out of him yet. Let me finish. <laughs> Finish, man. Yeah. I mean, look, I don't, I'm not going to give you the answer you want to hear because it's, it's no, no, there's feel. no answer I want to hear. I want to hear the truth. I want to hear what you feel. So go ahead. I mean, it's, I don't know, man. I, I honestly, I didn't, I don't think I was, was I with the national group? Oh, I was for a little bit. Um, but Bruce came in when it was already in a, in a, in a tough spot. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Honestly, I liked. This man trying to make the team. He's gonna say Burhalter. Just say it. No, no <laughs> I, 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 he did, that wasn't GD. one of the options. Said, yeah, 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 said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do that. I can, I, listen, and, Goose. And I want him to actually come back to the national team. So I didn't want to put him in that I, spot. I would say, I would say, I would say Bruce and Jurgen. I would Thank say you. Bruce and Jurgen because I think Jurgen had the thinking of pushing players and the style he wanted to play. Yeah. Right. It was hard to implement that at the time because I don't think we had the right player pool. Mm. But the way he wanted to do things was, I think, a little bit what you're seeing now um, with how we play and where the players play and the priority to, you know, to be in environments that challenge yourself. Mm. But the timing was kind of wrong for him. Mm. And then I like Bruce because I think when you come into the national team, um, as you guys know, when you're in the national team, you don't, it's not like a club team. You don't have all this time to do all these things. So it's a lot of man management. You got to know your roster well. You got to know what 11 guys work together on any given day for that team. And I think Bruce is one of the best I've ever seen at putting 11 guys on the field for that day, for that opponent, that'll get the job done. Mm. Um, And then his man management was fantastic, right? Mm. Guy, you're excited to come to camp. You want to be around. So I think those two, for me, having been around both, stuck out the most um, in in good ways. And I think uh, at times they got the, you saw they got the very best out of the program. 
the Marcus Youth Hall of Famer, Beasley. <laughs> I gotta answer this shit, dude. <laughs> it's a tough question. You played for seventeen. You played for seventeen Man. managers, so you would know uh, anybody. I mean, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta explain my shit like Gucci and and and. Uh, and, I, I, and I want you, to, but I want you to, I want you to, please. You we, know what I'm saying? The it's, audience it's, does. Look, and I'm gonna I'm say to be honest, I'm not trying to piggyback off of Josie, but I'm gonna kind of say the same shit he did. You know, it's. Yeah. It's hard. No, but seriously, it is. Gooch, I see you, I see you shaking your head. But because I'm going to take a little bit from everybody because it's hard to just pick one because of you said for me, me personally, you know, and then obviously with the team. You know, Bob was the one that pushed Bruce to bring me in to the national team at, you know, at, at 19, 18 years old. I would have never had a chance that early if, if Bob wasn't in Bruce's end. Like, no, this kid can play. Bring him into camp. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, he, you know, whatever. Um and then, you know what I'm saying, uh, I ha- obviously I had Bob uh, with Chicago. And then fast forward, you know, with Bruce, just what jo- Josie said, the man manage it part of it. You know what I'm saying? Like when you came into camp, it wasn't a job. It was it was fun. You get to see your brothers. You had, you know, it's freedom. But then at the same time, when it was time to play, it was time to play. You know, so he he kind of let you be yourself more than any other coach, mm. I thought. Him mm-hmm. and him and Jurgen. And then, you know, but at the same – and then saying that with Jurgen – you know, he believed in me. You know what I'm saying? Like when I did, when I had a horrible year in Germany, I didn't play. I played three games and I came to Mexico. I, I did well. But then he gave me the, you know, the the kind of that confidence to be like, okay, look, you, yeah, you're going to play left back, but I got you. You know what I'm saying? He put me in and played me. And that whole story with me, you know, transitioning to left back. And that was that story. So I have I have a lot of, of love for every single one of the coaches because of those stories, you know, that they um, – uh, that they, uh, you know, kind of helped me with my career. You know, both Bruce and Jurgen brought me out of retirement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I retired <laughs> twice, and they both said, "Go for real, bro." You, you know what I'm saying? Like real, they crazy. both, they both, they both, they both called me and said, "Okay, you still want to? We still need you to play." You know what I'm saying? And then, but I, I for I, if, I can't pick one, but I, I would just say, you know, Bob because of, you know his style, and then obviously because he gave me that that first you know that first uh chance when i was a you know 17 18 year old kid to go to national team. all right so, so when that so, happened so this is my piggyback question and i'm gonna drop and we move on right I, but, I, but, but can you can you understand that i'm the only one that answered that question yes you. you're the best thing in the world oh. i apologize and thank you so much <laughs> thank you. I, I just need you to acknowledge that I no problem you. i'm here for that i'm here for that thank you. i appreciate Listen, it I, I just need josie that. who has the uh, best style of play like which coach yes which coach out of those three who had the best style of play <clears throat> fitting uh, for our national I, I team. Can, I yeah, can tell you right now. It's hard, man. Because for me, for me, it's Bob. That's, not unfair. that's, not, that's kind of unfair because of every coach has a different player pool, right? So it's it's not – you can't necessarily say that. Like, it, they got to work with whatever they have at the moment. So okay, so but it's well, not then, the question, then the question is, with the player pool he had, which coach had the best style of play? But I hear what Joey says. It's different. No, 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 well, no, because well, you, you well, got to use the strength that you have. And some, some coaches don't use the strength and they try to put a square uh, square shape in around in around the uh, hole. Well, if you go by that, then you go by the results. The Bruce mm. team, 2002, mm. I mean, that team was amazing, right? So if you're going to look at it that way, you just have to look at it like that and <laughs> let it be, you know, let it be it. Because that team, I think you guys played at a 3-5-2, right, Bees? I don't, know, I don't it, remember yeah. what it yeah, was. Yeah, a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, you had spectacular players all over the field: Johnny O'Brien, Claudio Reyna, Oof. Tony Sane, Bees, Demar, uh, uh, Landon Donovan, Brian. Mc- I mean, <coughs> that team had so much quality, and, and Bruce obviously at that time found a way to get all the quality on the Josie, field. Josie, they forget. Not though. for that handball, man. I remember that handball. I was watching. <laughs> game, and I was pissed, man. I was like, it was VAR. I, that team would have made like the semifinal work. I really believe it. that team was. And people forget oh, that, that team. That team, made us all a fan. that team mostly was a European team too, playing in Europe. You know, yeah. and, and we act like these kids, these kids now, not for the kids, these ballers now who are playing in Europe now, we act like this is brand new. Oh, my God. Now, nobody's playing for Chelsea, but they were playing Champions League football. They were playing um, Bundesliga. They were playing Premier League. So, um, you know. Uh, uh, nah, Mook, you're being a prisoner of the moment a little bit, though. Okay. Because we had a bad, listen, you got to understand the U.S. national team fan, too. Cause I'm a fan now too, in a sense. Like yeah. it has been a dark time for a number of years. Even the guys are a part of that team, and that was terrible. We never, who wants that, you know? So I think they're trying to just re- reinvigorate themselves. And yeah, they we may, they may you may see things that are kind of like, what are you talking about? But I think there, are, I think the fans, U.S. men's national team fandom is allowed 
a little bit of runway with what has gone on the past, you know, four or five years. So I'm gonna keep it real, son. Everybody be goddamn happy if you get back to the national team and score our goals at number nine, man. <laughs> hey, yo, let me tell you so, Josie, our midfield is tight. I love Musa, Adams, yeah, Kinley. I think right. we have uh, Weston. We, I think we have amazing center backs. We just gotta get the right gel and keep consistency. I think Dest on the right, on the left. I'm not a Robinson fan, but he's looking better, right? And for me, I don't think we're missing is that number nine in the in, in, up front, and that's supposed to be you. You're 32 years old. You're still young, man. Start stretching more, eating. Right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Told you somebody's gonna get hurt. You go, knock out eight goals. Just stop, stop playing, man. I see you in Qatar, man. I see you in Qatar. But, here, but, but here's oh, a serious man. question for you, Moose and Josie and, and Bees. <clears throat> right now, because <clears throat> let's say this time last year, everyone was like Sergeant, 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 right? And they've they've kind of died off as of Sergeant, right? And now they're like, all right, DK, DK, DK. And they, and he's got injured. He, you know, died down from DK. Now they're like Peppy, Peppy, Peppy. Okay, you know, he's young. We don't know what he's going to come into. So let's say, shoot, first four months of the year, Josie banged seven, eight goals. Exactly. Right? Greg is DM. Is, 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 is it a reality that he's like, hey, hey Josie, how you feeling? <laughs> how, how, how you let, let me tell you something, though, Goosh. Let me tell you, I'm going to be real with y'all for a second. If anything, it's not these guys' fault. Mm -hmm. In every national team, you should have guys that are a little bit established that, okay, maybe you say they're not going to be there for the next 10 years, but it gives time for the guys behind them to develop. That's These what I was kids saying. Are throwing it, they were thrown into the fire. No, yes. and I'm saying that because yeah. you no, said they're, 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 they skipped the generation. Yeah. They skipped the generation. Exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are like 27, 25. You know, they were supposed to be in this group, you know, and sure. they didn't, it, it didn't, for whatever reason, it didn't happen. And, and myself included, I met, you know, we all messed it up in a way. So I think, I don't like to hear that about these guys. They need time, man. Like these are young no, kids. No, first of all, I didn't say I didn't Josh, say anything about listen, them. Josh, I know. I'm just saying, like Josh has done well, and in a, in a, I know what it's like playing a relegation team. It is not easy. It is not and he's easy. done well. All right, but Josie, but Josie, let me let me let me cut DK you off. I'm not. I'm, let, 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 let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. You. Let me stop. You. No, because I'm, I'm, no, 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 no. Listen, listen. My point, my point was, my point was, this is a World Cup year. I give they have all the time in the world they need to get better. But right, right now, now. Need players that are in form. This is World Cup year. You know what I'm saying? So in a World Cup year, if these players that you're like, they're great, they need time. If they're not where they need to be and you're over here busting goals, you know, you know, who, I'll give you an example. You know, it's no, no, yeah. in bottle. It's in bottle. No, I'll give you one better. Hercules Gomez. Yeah, exactly. These guys, he, he they, were, they weren't in the in picture. Camp. He wasn't in camps. He wasn't in camps. But he 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 won the scoring champion in Mexico, I think, that year. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, and yeah, he was sure scoring mad, that. yeah, scoring mad goals in Mexico, and, and and Bob brought him into the national team. There you go. So so what's yeah, the I, mean, I, I get I get I get no, I'm saying I get both points, but I hear what Gucci's saying though. You know, it is a World Cup. Year, yeah, so. but at the same time, man, like I just don't like you know, and I'm a striker. Maybe it's a strikers union thing. Like I don't like to. No see, such thing, y'all. You know, selfish bastards. No, nah, <laughs> no, nah, because this, this is this is a young this is a young group of guys that needs time. They're they're gonna you know they're not the finished article yet, man. Like they're they're gonna keep changing, keep you know evolving into different type of strikers. You know the striker you are at nineteen isn't the striker you're gonna be at twenty nine or whatever. You know, of right? Of course, take you your take your daddy hat off. Throat. Take your daddy hat off. We ain't talking no, but about what, it's not it's we, not about that. Listen, I, I all we care about is how they're gonna be in December. November. We don't know how they're going to be, man. We, that's my we point. That's we my, have, to, that's we my have point. to just get by. Look, all I'm saying is we, we do a lot of bashing, you know, as a, as a as a fandom of guys. It's time to get behind the boys, man. It's time to get behind the boys. Understand that everybody, you know, things are not going to go how you want them to go, whatever. Whether it be a Pulisic or, or a Serginho when he wasn't playing at Barcelona. Like, get behind the guys. Let's Jeez, give them Did I time. bash anybody? Or did I say I'm if just they're saying, not... In form, and I'm actually on Josie. I'm saying if Josie is rocking goals, what's the problem? Yeah, but, why are you, okay, why so are you getting on me for question, wanting you in, no, in that? But, but <laughs> I answered that question to you. I answered that question. I'm not, I told you, I'm not thinking about that. Like, that's not there are steps, man. You can't skip steps, you can't go from A to Z. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. No, but he's saying, Goose, that he's respecting the game. He's like, yo, I'm, he's just worrying about what's in front know, of him. I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to get him riled up. I know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. Whatever, man. Y'all, y'all crazy.
Hey, don't say y'all. That's the t- that's two light skinned brothers. Don't say y'all. Oh, <laughs> don't man. say y'all. That's 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 them. That's that. That's that light skin energy. Uh, you know, bees be bleaching his skin. Oh shoot! Oh, God. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> hey, move. What the hell that come from? Oh man! Hey, listen, man. But but Joe's. I hope the family's well. Um, I, I'm glad you had a chance to come on before the season starts I'm glad you had a chance to come on before the season starts because uh, I, I was cursing you out like yo, how come Josie ain't, ain't come on? Yo, Goose, text Josie. Hey, yeah, Goose, good. You text him? This is like, come on, y'all trying to get people in trouble on this show, man. Oh, oh, oh is that, 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 that's the truth? <laughs> is that the rumor? Is that the rumor around town? Oh. Don't go on the crack because they be trying to get people in trouble. Tell him, bees. Oh, Tell him, bees. Hold, hold up now. Hold up now. I got receipts. What I you got about receipts. to pull up? I said on May 21st, May 21st 2020, I was like, mm. Josie, my homie. Yo, hope you're good and the missus, blah, blah, blah. We'd love to have you on the show. We have a new podcast. Me, Gooch, and Mookie is right here. He mm-hmm. said, and I quote, what up, bro? Yeah, man. Wait, have y'all done something already I can see? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? I mean, I can't walk. I can't see the product before I get on it? No. This, this, we supposed to be your homie. Just come on the show. Yo, why Yo this, this, is hey, this is family. This is family. I didn't say no. Gooch, I didn't, so, uh, I didn't say so, no. Wait, so I said, I said, not yet. We got, we had uh, Jeff, we had Timmy. This is back oh. when we first started. And then he said, oh, that's awesome. Congrats to y'all. I said, yo. Remember you? <laughs> Good, I luck. Said, Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. I got, I got receipts. I got receipts. He said, <laughs> he said congrats to y'all. And I said, all right, whenever you feel like it, and you, I said, you know, bring slow, you bring your message, y'all come on the show, feel comfortable, crickets. That's, that's what you crickets. messed up. Yeah. Once, no, you, said up. Once you said slow, once you said slow, man, you get used to you messed on, up. No, 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 move, 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 to that point. What was the date? May, May 21st. 2019. Yeah, 2020. 2020. 2020. Nah, 2020. I believe that was peak quarantine. That was peak COVID, man. So you didn't have to do. What you mean? I was thinking about the family, bro. I was locking down. I was wearing my mask. I was sanitizing, bro. I he was sanitizing. Was he was sanitizing. sanitizing. I was worried about not getting the, the Rona, man. I was, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 said, like, he said, yeah, man, yeah. Let me let me see your product first before yeah, I trust he you. Said, <laughs> he, he, hey, he said, he said, he said, congrats to y'all. Like, <laughs> good luck, good luck, that. fellas. Good luck. Don't do that. Yo, yo. And then, and then, and then, catch the joke, catch the joke. Two weeks later, on another man's podcast. I said, oh. <laughs> what podcast was that? Huh? What podcast what? was that? What was that? What podcast? What podcast? It was another person's podcast. We got to go you back see? in the archive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got receipts. You ain't got no receipts, man. I got hey, receipts. I got that. receipts, but I got love for my... I got receipts, but I got love for other people's podcasts. I got love for you. Other people's podcasts. Yeah. Josie, would you get into yeah. coaching after your career? Uh... Nah, I mean, if it was the right staff, if it was the right staff, maybe, because, you know, you know what the working environment is going to be like, you know, how you're going to play. Like, it'd have to definitely be the right group. But if not, absolutely not. That's not something have you, I... Have you, have, you taken, have you taken any courses? Any uh, coaching courses? I have not. Coaching is not something I want to do, to be honest. Okay. Like, uh, like I said, I, I, if it's the right staff, listen, maybe, listen, but... Listen. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I, I took my B. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Mm, that's True. life. Hey, we got to end right. on that. We got to end on that right there, brother. Amen. Josie, I know you got um, things to do. You got a family now. You know, you got to call your wife. You got to tuck <laughs> in your son. Wife. But uh, it, 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 I'm excited for this season. I'm excited for you to be, uh, to get a, um, you know, just a fresh jersey, new city to conquer. And, um, you know, and bang New excitement. Yeah. New excitement. Yeah, man. New feel like it, feel like you 19, 18 again, man, coming into the Red Bulls. Yeah, you know? I feel great. I'm excited, man. Thank you guys for having me. It's been a pleasure. Much love, man. For sure, man. All right, Good man. luck, brother. Love. All, right, All right, y'all. Peace out. Love Peace you, out. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. Coach, you need those receipts, man. You should have pulled it out, man. Uh, you know I knew who it was. I know, I, I, know. Know. I know, I know, I know. I didn't even know who, you, who you're talking about. He was he was on uh, uh Grant Wall's podcast two weeks after we asked him, and I was like, "Damn, uh, that's what it was." Oh, he wants to he wants like, yeah. he know Grant our, our boy. He wants to. I love I love Grant. I ain't, it ain't throwing a Grant under the bus, but I was like, "Come on, Josie, I thought we were your boys." You know, oh, man. <laughs> now, we, we had to tease you about that, Josie. We had well, to tease you about. I that. mean, but but real talk though, what what he's supposed to be our boy, right? 
this man said, wait, can I see something y'all done done already before I get on y'all show? And, and then he hit you with the, oh, no, no, it was COVID. It was COVID. Yeah. It was COVID. <laughs> <laughs> nah, very, the worst part about that whole exchange was, yo, good luck to y'all. <laughs> yeah, he said, <laughs> he said keep, congrats keep, to y'all. Keep doing your thing. Congrats. Keep doing your thing. Yeah. <laughs> thing, man. But, 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 but definitely, oh, uh, I, I am excited, man. I, I meant what I said in terms of I'm praying that he bangs out eight goals and gets on the rhythm and you know, everybody jumps back on the bandwagon. He gets a chance to be fit because I, I really did believe we need him. We need him on the squad. We need that veteran presence up front. We don't have it. You know, I keep on telling people like, you know, I'm not against Josh Sargent and Pepe. That's great, but they shouldn't. They are not ready. And the they fact shouldn't is, be. you you know, they're not ready when there's so many in rotation. You don't know who's going to start any who. any given game. You're like, uh, who's the best person for this team? At, at number know. nine, it shouldn't be that way. Shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be. Shouldn't the, be you, need, you need the rhythm. You need the rhythm. We should know who we pass but, no, to. But, but, I, but I'll play devil's advocate. So, But in these okay. type of games, don't you want him getting those type of reps? Even though the, the end game isn't there yet. Yes, we know it's a World Cup. Yes, we know the, the number nine is the – Who you talking about? Job. Who you talking about? His job is a, whoever. Because, okay. I mean, ain't none of them scoring. Ain't none of them scoring. So goals. you're trying to say be consistent and, regardless, regardless of their productivity the past couple of games. Keep on I starting mean, the same one. I hate you. No, I'm just saying. This truth. I'm just saying, like if you, if you, if you, you know, you got confidence, you trust this player, especially as a striker. Yeah, yeah. As a striker, you know, strikers, you know, they, they, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. But you know, they. um, So, coach, who who are you out of all the, the, the the plays we have in the pool right now? Who are you starting up front to give them that consistency and to believe in them game in game out? Striker. Um, As a striker. I mean, I, I would, for me, I, I would say, um, what's the the, the who, who are the strike? Who are, who are the strikers? Uh, Pfo. Yeah, that's what I said P-fo. too. P-fo. P-fo. I, said, I mean, P-fo. I'm just saying. I, I mean, he's a, right he, now. You look at the, you look at the forwards. He you started know, before we once, get off though. real quick. You get you look at the forwards: Pepe, DK, Jassy, uh, DK, Sergeant, Pepe, and Sergeant, and. We they can play, throw in Josie for they, now. They play the Fiera guy up there too, right? That's, that's the thing. The, yeah, yeah, the one from Fiera. Dallas. Yeah, from Dallas. So I mean, I would. I mean, the man scored twenty goals. He just scored a twentieth goal last uh, last week, I think. Um, why not? Just and I like him. him. He, he's a, he's a big presence. I'm he not has good feet. Yeah. Lays the ball off well. Has good speed. Has a presence in the air. I don't know. So it's something, uh, something that something between him and Greg. Exactly. For him to get caught, not to get caught in the last trip or even the one before that was weird to me. Yeah. And not we, to see not, him and be like, "Yo, this kid's a Champions League player." Um, he's one we going with is, is weird as well. Not, not even not even Champions League player, but a man scoring goals. Yeah. I mean, this is what you yeah. want your number nine to do. I mean, and we haven't had that. All and he, and he scored for the, he scored for the U.S. I mean, it was a friendly, but he scored. So I'm, I'm just saying, I, I, if you if you ask me if you ask me the question of who I would go with now, I would say him. You know, I can't say Josie because he hasn't played. You know, he, yeah. he has to you know get fit and do that. But that's that's who I would go with right now if I had to pick one person. Josie, Josie, Jordan, Josie. Jo- Jordan's in form. Obviously, he's banging goals every every weekend. You're like, oh, one goal, two goals, whatever. The issue with him with Greg, I feel, is Greg would have to change his whole system or style of play to fit him. You versus so? the other, I think he's versatile. Yeah, because he can play. He can play inside. He, does, he, does, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't run in behind, which mm. he needs. He, he doesn't. He, he's a hold up play and 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 bring the other players into it, and that's fine. He's he's a point man, but and, who and that's, else is and that's a point Greg, man? And that's, besides... that's Greg's style because I'm thinking they with Pulisic so in then, the wing. So then, and, you... and, and Timothy Weyer, you want a, a strong. I'm just saying, if you if you series. if you think of P folk in comparison to what the other ones you said, so DK, Pepe, Sarge, DK's a hold up. Sergeant's a whole. No, nah, DK, DK can DK run goes space behind. as well. Yeah, you can go. Okay, behind. so you say that. You say that. Then, then Joji doesn't fit his system then, because Joji's not running behind. And, and he'll, he'll Joji. No, no, no. Jo, I, I remember my playing against Joji when he was. He'll peel off. I remember he yeah. always tried to play in between. He he'll peel off and like exactly. his Mikey would always play that. But I always I remember when I was in Houston, I just told our our, our, our defenders. He would stick. He would be right in front of you, but then he would peel off, and Mikey would just take one look, and Mikey would chip that ball right over the center back, right in between the center back and the outside back, right on Josie's chip. I mean, they do it six, seven, eight times a game, every single time. So Josie wasn't running all the time. He would just peel off and then like just chip that little ball over the top. So, but Josie's not actually running in behind. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, he's not, not systematically. So, he, Josie's not systematically yeah. running in behind, but Josie's not slow either. He can at times. Yeah, he's not choose, slow. He, he's he, not he slow. picks and chooses his moments. I don't think Pifok has that speed to. He's not going to break. You know, beat the back line in speed one on one. He ain't slow. I don't see it. 
He ain't slept. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Hey, hey, but listen, man. Great show. Um, excited for Josie this upcoming season. MLS is about to get uh, get, get rolling. So happy for happy for them and hoping to see a, a obviously a better product on the field this year. So I'm excited. A lot of new players. Uh, Shakiri is in Chicago. Um, true, true. Um, your boy Costa um, is in LA Galaxy. Uh, Carlos Vela is is uh, is back healthy. So you know it should be you know it sh- it, sh- it should be a turn up type of year, man. It's a World Cup year, so it should be a lot of, a lot of things fighting for each other. So I'm happy about that. Yeah. Bob might Bob or Bruce might bring bees out of retirement a fourth time. <laughs> hey, I think I think one thing's clear that I think Josie's with the right coach at the right time in his career. If if he has any opportunity to get a spark plug yeah. and, and get back yep. to an old form, right? That's true. I, I agree with that. Yeah, man. So, Gooch, take us out, my brother. Take us out, yo. This season is going on fire right now. I like our guests. I like the vibe. Hopefully the, the listeners like it as well. You know, we try to give you our truths and our guests truth every time. So as always, subscribe, comment, like us, follow us on social media. Please follow us on social media. And, uh, you know, yeah, just keep 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 showing us love. And the reason I need you to follow on social media because people like Josie Alza are not going to come on the show if they don't see we have X amount of followers. It seems to be. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how much how friends we are, how much history we have of each other. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Cool. All right, family. Peace. All right, peace. peace.